A brief introduction. Um, I'm Abigail Smith. I'm an instructional designer here at College of Public Service and Community Solutions. Hi, come on in. Hi. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Have a seat. You're just getting started. We're part of the Office of Education and Innovation. Um, we have two people who uh, needed to join online, so we got that set up. And then this is Farnoosh. Farnoosh and I are both instructional designers for the College of Public Service. Oh, great. Okay. We're part of the Office of Education and Innovation. There are four of us all together. And we provide consultation on course design and teaching and um, integrating technology into teaching, uh, things like that. So, so as you know, the, the presentation is called the Rubrics, the Magic Wand for Your Courses. And um, I chose that metaphor. Let's see if my presentation will actually work. There we go. Um, based on... Um, like photo editors, a lot of them have the magic wand icon somewhere in there where you click a button and it changes a whole bunch of things in your um, photo all at once. It'll adjust lighting and coloring and contrast all at once and magically make the photo look better. And um, for some reason this is the metaphor that came to mind about rubrics because when you have a rubric in your course, a grading rubric in your course, um, a lot of things sort of magically improve, um, such as you save time grading, um, you reduce the number of questions that students bring to you about your assignments, you increase the objectivity uh, of your grading, um, it's not quite so subjective, and if you have like, if you have TAs or multiple graders in the course, there's more consistency from grader to grader. Um, improve the student outcomes, so what they submit for the assignment um, ends up being of a better quality. And student satisfaction. They like knowing what's expected of them and have um, a better time in the course when, when they have those expectations made clear. So all of that with one little humble rubric. Um, and then to extend the metaphor a little bit further, I don't know if any of you are into fantasy or anything like that, but you know, the, where, when they have to create a spell, you know, they have this magic spell. It doesn't just happen. You've got to go collect the herbs, or you have to catch the newt and cut its eyes off or something like that, put it in your culture. It takes a little bit of work up front so that you can do the magic later. And that's as far as my metaphor is going to go <laughs> with the magic. Um, but anyway, so I, I also want to assure you that using the uh, rubrics tool in Blackboard, you don't need a really high level of technological skill. It's one of the simpler um, tools to use in Blackboard. The hardest part about it is uh, getting there. The Blackboard just doesn't make it easy, so finding where it is. You, rubrics are also useful not just for online courses, but also face-to-face -face courses. You can print a rubric out on paper and grade, you know, with a pencil. You can also use Blackboard for your face-to-face -face courses. So you have your assignments and you can grade in Blackboard while having your lectures in person and sort of have the best of both worlds. Um, so contact us if that piques your interest. What we're going to be doing in this session, I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration of grading with rubrics so you can see how easy it is to use them. We'll have about a 15 minute um, explanation of how to design a rubric that is going to meet these goals of making it simpler and saving time and all that stuff. Then I'll walk you through entering a rubric into Blackboard and then how to grade using the rubrics. And so that numbers three and four will be the hands-on part of it where we'll actually get into your course, enter the rubric, and do it together. It's the best way to learn is by doing, right? So I just want to make sure that everybody can access a Blackboard course. I sent an email out with um, instructions if you want to join a sandbox if you don't have your own Blackboard course. But if, um, if anybody doesn't have access to a Blackboard course, let me know. I'm going to check the chat for the online part of it. <laughs> So speak now. We'll, we'll have time later as well. If you're, if you're unable to get into Blackboard and use it, um, we'll help us solve that as well. I also sent out an email with a sample rubric for a project that we can use for entering into Blackboard, like copying and pasting from. So if you want to get your email open now and, and get that document ready, that might be useful later. You don't have to use that. We can, you, know, you could just type in gibberish into the rubric tool as well. Uh, but I thought I'd provide that. So. Okay, let me move to um, the demonstration of grading with the rubric. Um, this is a sample assignment. I hope everyone can see it. This is, I, I just entered a dummy assignment into uh, Blackboard, and this is what the student submitted. And this um, grading page, if you've ever worked in Blackboard, should be pretty familiar. 
I attached a rubric to it. Now, this is what I mean with the hardest part is finding it, because Blackboard doesn't make it easy. There's this little tiny down arrow here you have to click on, and then it brings you to the rubric. And you have two options. This mouse. You can either click this icon to open up the rubric in table format so that you see um, you see it like in a grid. And so here are our criteria. We're grading on uh, formatting, mechanics, timing, organization, whether they use quality sources, um, if they included all the required topics. Um, you can also you see it in list format by clicking on the title of the rubric here and it expands it. And these are our criteria. And then if you want to show the description, you click that. And show feedback allows you to type in specific options. So I'm just going to, I actually prefer using the table format myself. It's up to you. Um, I'm just going to quickly give the student a grade. And if you write into the feedback, Yes. Uh -huh. The student will see that and it will save. Right. Yep. Instead of on the other option, you have to click to save it. You have to click give feedback. When you're done with this um, layout, there's a submit option and it saves it into there. And, and the feedback will, okay. will be seen. Thank you. I had a question here. Sure. Um, so sometimes um, they don't get full points, but I don't want to take off as many points as it says. Is it okay to do manually, you know, change the number of points from 0 to 100? So say I put it in and they only get an 80, mm -hmm. but I feel like they should get an 85. Is that okay to manually do there? Yep. So when you, when you click on these boxes here in, in Blackboard, it automatically tells mm -hmm. up the points. And here is your box for manually overriding it. Um, okay. Just you just want to be careful Thank with you. that because the whole point of grading with a rubric is to be um, objective and consistent. And so if you're adjusting mm -hmm. things and changing what you entered in the rubric, um, okay, then you're going to have pushback from the student, especially if you give them fewer points than what what it says. <laughs> okay. Um, and then here's Thank you. For overall feedback, um, so this would be for the whole thing. And all of this can take, you know, it's just literally click, 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 click. And if you want to type any feedback, that's what takes your time. You click Save, and you'll notice that it updated here in the um, feedback area. I click Save Rubric. Oh, why did it reset? That's not supposed to happen. There we go. 80. The student got an 80. I can type in specific feedback. And then I click Submit. Now let's see what the student sees. So that was very easy. It's just going to jump to the next student. You're saving a lot of time. You don't have to type things out a bunch of times. You know, the same thing over and over. The student from their end, you send an announcement. OK, papers are done being graded. You can check your grades now. This is the student preview mode. They're going to go to My Grades. And by the way, this sandbox course is not our ideal for how course should be designed. Just wanted to <laughs> say that. This is just a. Um, the default Blackboard submission. Okay, so student goes into my grades and they say, oh, I got an 80. Um, this little thing means that they have feedback on it. They can click here to view the rubric. It opens up and they can see, why, why did I get an 80? I covered all the topics. Oh, but my um, analysis lacked um, some evidence and logic to support the claims. Uh, here's how I did it. I got some APA formatting errors. And they can see very clearly why you mark them as an 80%. And that's, that's that. So I'm going to exit the student mode. We'll be coming back to this course later. Um, I see that there was a question. You determine the completeness of the rubric and the development of the rubric. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure I understand your question, Jan. Um, are you saying that we decide what completeness means when we write when we're designing the rubric. Yeah, yeah. And we're actually going to go into that now, talk about how to design rubrics and um, what we're looking for. Um, one common misconception. I have, can I ask one quick question? I'm sorry. Sure. Um, can, from the student view, can you show me how they see their um, comments? Oh, yeah. Um, it's right in the rubric. Sorry. Oh, OK. So I'll go back to student view here. Sorry. 
They click on my grades. Uh -huh. And they click on view rubric. Yep. See here where I typed in the feedback for analysis, it shows right there okay. under the analysis row of the of the rubric. And Got it. Thanks. And the overall feedback is here in this icon, the little uh, word bubble. Mm. And they, Great job. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So one common misconception about rubrics or one thing that um, people sometimes push back um, at me when I say, hey, you should use rubrics is, but I'll be spoon feeding my students. College is supposed to be hard. I'm not supposed to just give them all the answers, right? Well, uh, my answer to that is, yes, college is supposed to be hard, but there's a difference between things being academically difficult and things being confusing just because you don't know how to explain something clearly, right? Um, and so you don't want to be like the guy in Dilbert. I don't, are you guys familiar with Dilbert, the, the comic? Um, he's an engineer who works for a company, and here is a... Um, a meeting of Dilbert with a project manager. He's supposed to design something for this project manager. I don't know if, I don't know if you guys can read it here. <laughs> you don't want to be that guy who's like, it's all in my head and you're supposed to read my mind. <laughs> right? Rubrics make things clear. They provide expectations. Uh, but it's not spoon feeding the students and that you're giving them the answers. At least if you're designing the rubric correctly, it can actually make it more difficult for the students because if things are vague, students might, you know, just do the bare minimum to pass what they think your expectations are. Whereas if you spell it out clearly, it has to have five quality sources. It has to have, you know, a certain level of research power behind it. You're going to get a better product and they might actually work harder. Um, it's also, uh, rubrics are also excellent if you have TAs. I've mentioned this before. Um, anytime I work with an instructor who says they're going to have a TA helping them grade, I always first think you got to have rubrics. It's going to help you so much. Uh, so hopefully that convinces you about what rubrics are. Um, so let's jump into the design. I usually like to start on paper. I feel like I think better when I work with my hands at first before going to the computer. That's just my preference. Um, but you want to keep the goals in mind. What are you doing this rubric for? Um, and for the magic wand approach, for rubrics, these are going to be the goals that we're working for. You might have different ones. You might have um, uh, different goals or add to this. Um, but we're going to try to save time in grading. We're going to try to make our expectations as clear as possible. And we're going to try to provide objectivity and consistency across our grading. So bearing that in mind. Uh, my favorite approach for designing the rubric is to try to break it. What are the possible, all the possible ways that students can mess this up? and include that in the rubric. Everything that I'm going to take points off for has to be in the rubric. So if you're going to grade on spelling and grammar, you want to have a row about spelling and grammar in your rubric. Um, some common things included in the rubrics are completeness, organization, clarity, accuracy, length, um, language mechanics, which is spelling and grammar, and APA formatting. And you might have you know, specific ones for your assignment and your expectations. For smaller assignments, you're not going to be as detailed for, you know, an end of term paper where it's, you know, worth a lot of points, you might have a lot of criteria. And then you need to decide how much each item is worth. So here's an example. This is the rubric that I sent out, the video um, rubric. We've got these are, these are our criteria. This is worth 10 points. Uh, rhetorical mastery is worth the most because that's really the point of giving a presentation is are you able to articulate your points clearly and logically, and does the audience understand you? Required topics, audio quality, um, the video quality is the focus good on the student, and then the length. Okay, so this is a sample rubric. Seems pretty straightforward. These are the uh, various levels of um, quality that they can achieve, full credit, partial credit, or no credit. Um, so some common pitfalls when we're designing. Um, one of, one of the pitfalls that you'll see, um, I actually went online and there are websites out there that say that the, you can download rubrics that are pre-designed and they're awesome and use them in your course. And I found so many <laughs> that I would definitely not recommend. So here's an example. Way too complicated. Um, we have the elements here at the side, that's fine. Uh, the mechanics, um, analysis and argument, connection of content to other ideas. This is great, but look, we've got seven different levels of quality here to differentiate between those steps. 
first of all, this is going to take you forever to write and to work out in your mind, well, what's the difference between a 75% and an 80%? Second of all, the students are not going to read this. They're going to go to the very end, the excellent column, and they're going to kind of shoot for that. And then all your time you spent in the middle is basically wasted. Um, it's going to be cumbersome to use. It's going to be annoying. I don't recommend using rubrics that are way too complicated. Generally, three or four columns is enough. Um, another um, style of rubric that I see often that I think is can be a pitfall depending on what you're going for is using the rubric as a checklist where you list what you want and then it's just yes or no. And you can do it this way. There's not necessarily anything wrong with that. But I think that rubrics work best when they provide qualitative feedback. And there are different tiers of quality that you can give them um, so that when they get their grade, they know why you marked yes or no on that item. Um, another reason that I think that avoiding checklist, the checklist approach for rubrics is that there's always going to be that one student who technically meets the criteria but it's not really what you're looking for. So some humorous examples. Name the quadrilateral, right? The student named the quadrilateral. They followed the instructions, but that's probably not what the teacher was looking for. I've got a few more. Just because it's after lunch and it's time, everybody's sleepy, I'm going to try to <laughs> make things interesting. Draw a plant cell. OK. <laughs> Again, probably not what the teacher was looking for. And then finally, this one is uh, my favorite. Come up with an equation that is true when x equals 7. Well, x equals 7 is <laughs> an equation, right? It meets the criteria, but there's no qualitative uh, feedback there <laughs> for a student. Um, so to avoid those students, it's better to have uh, levels of criteria, I think, in my opinion. But that might not be what you're going for. If for smaller assignments or, you know, there's not the stakes aren't as high, um, you might just have a checklist. And sometimes you actually need a checklist, right? Sometimes you've got to have topic one, two, three, four, and five have to be included in the project, right? Um, so how can we approach that and still provide um, some of that feedback? Well, the first thing that people usually do um, when trying to kind of mitigate this is something like this, where they have, these are all the things in the, that I'm grading on, topic one, topic two, topic three. And then they give, you know, these are our levels of quality. But you'll notice that each of, whoops, uh, go back. Each of these rows is exactly the same. It's just applying to topic one, topic two, and topic three. That's one possible way to do it, but I actually prefer a different approach. And that would be in the instructions when you're giving the assignment. So this isn't the grading rubric. This is just the instructions of, how to, of what you're looking for when you um, give the assignment. Here's your description. You list your topic one, two, three, four, and five. And then in the grading rubric, have a completeness row, or you can call it, you know, whatever you want, thoroughness or whatever. And then you move all five topics required or covered in the paper, and that's how they get full points. Fewer than that, they lose points. And then you can provide other um, aspects of the assignment, like were, were the arguments good, did they provide quality sources, or whatever you're grading on. I think that works a little bit better. I'm going to quick check for questions. Um, another common pitfall um, in designing grading rubrics is um, mixing more than one item into a single row. So here is a sample. Again, I found this on these supposedly um, quality rubrics that you can download from this website. Responses use correct grammar and spelling and information is in your own words. And what's wrong with this? What's going to happen? You're going to get students who, yes, they write in their own words, but the spelling and grammar is terrible. How are you going to grade them using this rubric? You can't because they're mixed together into one cell. So you'd have to click this one or the next one, and then you'd have to type in feedback. Yes, great, but spelling, grammar errors, blah, 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 something like that. Um, it's just not going to give you that level of precision that you need, and it's going to um, not save you time, which is one of our goals. Here's another one I found. This is a doozy. So for con contribution, we've got this big row here. And to achieve the sophisticated uh, <laughs> level of quality, they have to do all this. Requirements and objectives are identified. Deliverable offered new information. Application is based on stated criteria. In my mind, this is at least three rows that you're, that you're grading on. Because what's going to happen if the student, they meet all the objectives, um, but they didn't offer a new approach and they're deliverable? 
you, which one are you going to choose, competent or sophisticated? You know, how are you going to provide that feedback to the student that actually matches what they submitted? So this can be challenging, and honestly, sometimes you have to sort of mash things together. If it's, a, if it's an assignment that's only worth 10 points, you can't have 20 criteria in there and have it really be a meaningful rubric. Sometimes you have to sort of be creative in how you put things together. But try to avoid it so that you can, you know, again, save time, be clear, and avoid that kind of pushback. Another one, this is um, sort of preference, um, but try to avoid judgmental labels. Um, the default rubric when you first start in Blackboard, they have one of the uh, quality levels is um, novice. I just, that strikes me as weird. Like, it's kind of like damaging to your self-esteem, you know, like, oh, I'm a novice and whatever. I mean, of course they're novices. They're students. They're learning, right? Um, if that's, you know, it's not the end of the world if you're going to use that kind of language, but I tend to prefer language that's a little bit more objective, like met criteria or full credit. My favorite is full credit, partial credit, and no credit because there's no, like, yeah, damaging, like, good or poor. Proficient. <laughs> proficient, yeah. <laughs> it's, again, it's not the end of the world if you use those kinds of things, but we don't want to be the squirrel of judgment for the student. We want to be the teacher who's helping them learn, right? Um, and finally, the most common problem that I see is um, an, um, a cell or a criteria that's just not measurable. So let's look at this one. This is a, another rubric I found. Visual, so it's a presentation. They have to provide a visual with their presentation. The visual was eye-catching and interesting. It enhanced the presentation. And what's the problem here? How do you measure interesting? How do you measure eye-catching? Like, what does that mean? It's going to mean different things to different people. If you have two TAs helping you grade, and one of them likes lots of decorations in their visuals, and the other one's much more minimalist, they're going to provide different um, scoring on this item based on their preference of what they think is interesting. So brainstorm, how could we improve this rubric so that we're measuring a visual that the student has in their presentation? What are, what's some other language we can use? I'm going to open the, the ideas. How could we how could we enter a visual? How can we grade a visual using something that's more measurable? Maybe the number of visuals. That yeah, the number of visuals is um, um, maybe the size of it. If you have a criteria of yeah. what size you want it to be. Yeah, the visual can be seen, is large enough to be seen from the back of the room, or the theme was the same throughout the presentation. Right, yeah, color scheme, like all the colors. Yeah, a lot of times they have different slides, uh -huh. and you're just like, no. Yeah. It's like cohesive, so no. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's great. Here's another. And the font size. Font size, yeah. Again, making it. And font size. Mm -hmm. And here's another one. A completeness row, we talked about that earlier. Um, but we have most required topics are covered, several, few, fewer than three. All right, so what's the problem here? If we have a list of 10 required topics, what does most mean? Is I mean, technically most means over 50%, right? So if they get six out of 10 required topics, they get full points? Is that what that means? You know, like, what is that? Where is the number? One, one, um, TA might say, okay, it's seven, they, they, they reached most. And the other one's like, no, they've got to have all 10 to get full points. you got to be measurable there, so provide numbers. All 10 required topics are covered in the paper. Eight to nine required topics are covered in the paper. Six to seven, fewer than six, something like that, however, however that works up. So in this part, it, it takes the most effort and thought because you have to really focus. And again, you have to think, how can the student break this? Or how can my TA who's grading break this? Like, what are, what are the possible ways that this could backfire on me, you know? So um, let's go to Blackboard now. And um, practice entering it into Blackboard. So there are two ways that you can get rubrics into Blackboard. Is everyone in, everyone logged into Blackboard? You're able to follow along OK? All right, so first, Make sure that edit mode is on. That green light at the top is lit. And then at the bottom left here in the course management area, 
there's this gray area, it's the course management area. I'll click on course tools and then scroll all the way down. This mouse is really weird, I'm having a hard time using it. And click rubrics. This is our rubric creation, or this is where all the rubrics in the course live, so to speak. I've got several here. <clears throat> and at the top there's a button that says create rubric. So you give it a title, whatever you want to name it, for the assignment, and scroll down, and this is the default that they give you. They give you three rows, three columns, um, they, you know, standard is formatting, organization, grammar, and then novice, competent, proficient. Um, and you've heard my opinions on those titles. Um, we can move the columns around. I actually like to have the whatever's worth full credit um, first in the row. So we, we read left to right, and I like to have it, you know, the, the ideal, what they're going for, as the first thing that they read. Where did you do that? I missed it. This button right here where it says levels of achievement left and right. Okay. You click on that. And like I said, Blackboard doesn't make things very um, user friendly. And then click submit, and then they've got them moved around here. And then if you want to move the rows, this button here it says criteria up and down. You click on that, and it looks like nothing happened, but you have to scroll all the way down, and it makes this box appear at the bottom, which it, is totally dumb. <laughs> it's like, why don't they put it right there where you can actually see it? But yeah, this is the um, this is where you can reorder them. So you select that and then click down and or up or whatever and submit. And we have rubric types. We can do no points, and that would be if you just want to provide the qualitative feedback, but you're not attaching numerical value to it. You can do points, point range, or percent or percent range. And this is completely a matter of preference and um, what's going to work best for your course. I like points um, because I feel like it's a little easier to grasp for when students are looking at what, how many points is this worth. Um, it might be the way you set up your course is percentage-based, and that's totally fine too. Um, the, the thing that happens sometimes with percentages is, um, like let's say you have an assignment that's worth 15 points, and you have a percentage-based rubric, and they get 30% off or 25% off, you're going to end up with a score that's a decimal. And that's just a little awkward and weird to see that in your grading center. Not the end of the world. Um, I just tend to have points or a whole number, easier to get around with, and um, that kind of thing. But it's whatever you want. I have a question. Yeah. With the point range, mm -hmm. do you have to manually enter in the point range for yeah. each rubric or mm -hmm. for each column in the rubric? Yeah, when you're grading, yeah, if you do a range. And that'll still pre-populate the total? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will. Okay. And it will give them that feedback. So you click on the cell that says, you know, provided two quality sources. or So they'll see the, the qualitative feedback, but you have to manually type in the numbers. So you could do, like, between 27 and... Yeah. yeah. Points and the mm -hmm. next one, 31 to, okay. Yeah. I think this will, the point range would be, that answers uh, Sarah's question. Yeah. She also had that question, like, if I don't want to give them, I don't want them to lose all the marks. I just want to give yeah. them some, so mm -hmm. the point range would mm -hmm. yeah. kind of answer that question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, it depends on the strategy that you're using for your, um, for your grading. Okay. You're, you're Can I ask a question? You have to manually type the number each time, but you're, you're going to gain some flexibility. Or you can also do something like um, if you have a spelling and grammar row, you can just say you lose one point for every grammar mistake that you make up to 20 points. And so then the spelling grammar row is worth 20 points, and you can manually type that in. That's, that's one possibility. Um, she said she had a question. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Is this the same place where we, if they're already in there, we edit them? Or yeah, do you want to, so, or do we edit? Okay. So, yeah, I was just going to get to that. If you want to edit what the rows are called or the columns are called, there's these down arrows next to the name. Click on the down arrow and click edit. And then, so I'm going to go to my Word document here. That This is the um, thing that I typed up. And I'm just going to copy, go back to Blackboard, paste, and save. And so this is what I would do 
when I'm entering the um, rubric into Blackboard. So if you want to go ahead and do that now, follow along, um, get some practice with the copying and pasting, you're totally welcome. Um, I have, oops, I have five rows in this rubric here. Blackboard provides me with a default of three rows, so I have to add. So I'm just going to click Add Row twice. Oh, this mouse. And then I could copy and paste into there. Does that make sense? And then for the columns, it's the same thing. You click the down arrow, click Edit, full credit. I'm going to switch this to points. Partial credit. Um, Jan asked if we could add word count. Yeah, um, but the rubric itself will not count the words for you. Um, you're going to have to do that through Blackboard or through Word, uh, Microsoft Word, or whatever. Yeah, it's unfortunately. Can you do it through Blackboard? Um, in discussion boards, it will, but not in assignments. Can you say that again? I missed what you said. The word count. Um, mm -hmm. She's asking if we can include word count in there. Um, and you can create a row for word count. Um, but the rubric itself won't count the words for you. The, the grading center won't do that, unfortunately. It, it will do that in discussion boards, but not for assignments. So what you'd have to do is um, download the assignment, bring it into Microsoft Word, and have it do the word count for you, which is, again, annoying and um, time-consuming, yeah. Um, so... Sorry about that. But yeah, word count is definitely um, is definitely a very common element in rubrics. You know, how is it does it meet the length that that's required? So I'm just gonna enter one more row here. Is there a way to add a rubric just for like the TAs but not have it available for the students? Um, yeah, well, you would attach it to the assignment and just make it not visible. Is that what you mean? Mm -hmm. So they would grade from that, but the students wouldn't be able to see it. Okay, so then we can enter the points here, or if it's percentages, you'd be entering percentages in these boxes. Makes sense. Okay. And then, you know, we would go through each cell, copy and paste our words into here. If you already know what you want to do, of course, you can just type it directly into Blackboard. I feel it's easier to work in Word. Like, there aren't as many um, menus to deal with. You know, Blackboard gives you all this, you have to do all these clicks. Um, I feel it's easier to think when you're in a cleaner environment of Word. But then the downside to that is you have to copy and paste back and forth from one to the other. Um, but Let's just assume I filled all of these in and it's ready to go. So click Submit. And here it is in my list of rubrics. My awesome rubric is right there. So now let's attach a rubric to an assignment. So I'm going to click Content. This, or where, You would go wherever in your course your assignment is located, where, this, where the students are going to access it. And by the way, this is the second way to create rubrics. I told you there are two ways to create rubrics. One is by going to the rubrics tool under course management. And the other one is when you're creating the assignment itself or when you're editing the assignment. There is an option in the edit menu, which is scroll down under grading where it says grading. Add rubric, and you can either create a new rubric or you can select from ones that you've already created. So if I click Create New Rubric, it brings up the rubric tool that we just saw. So there's a title, this is our default, all of these buttons that we saw before, it's exactly the same tool, and then you click Submit. But I already created the rubric, so I'm just going to go to Select Rubric, and then choose it from the list. My awesome rubric, that's the one we just created. And then, do I want to give it the maximum points possible? Yes, because I didn't enter my point values when I was editing it. And now, um, for some reason, Blackboard defaults the rubric to not be visible to students when you first enter it. I don't know why. I think the default should be yes, but it's no. So you have to make sure you click on this button 
and click yes if you want the students to be able to see what they're being graded on. So these are all, you know, I would enter in all my um, criteria for the assignment, click submit, and that's how we do that. And it's the same for discussion boards. Um, I'm going to go to discussions here and if you're in the discussion area, and you go to the, uh, the name of the discussion and there's a contextual menu here with the little down arrow. Click on that and click edit. And this is where, again, we can attach the rubric. You'll see uh, it's down under. You have to make the rubric gradable. You can't say no grading or you can't attach a rubric. Um, once you make it gradable, then this um, option to add a rubric appears. And again, it's the same menu we saw before. Select, create new. Um, all that. So I could attach the discussion rubric here, click submit, again, make it visible so they can see it, and then that's how we would add it that way. Any questions so far before we jump into how to grade with the rubric? Awesome. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to submit a dummy assignment to this uh, assignment that we just created. So if you click on the, this, these arrow icons here to enter the student preview, we're going to submit a fake assignment so that we can grade it. So it was located under content in this one. It, wherever it is in your course, that's where you'd go. So we can actually do this, and it's not going to mess anything up. And mm -hmm. we can, wow. Did your world just change? It did. It was always <laughs> Once you discover student preview. You have to make sure when you exit, you have to keep your data. Yeah. The default is delete all mm -hmm. the preview data. You have to always keep your preview data so that fake student always stays in your course. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, this is what it does is it creates a fake student uh, and it's called your name and then add student preview user onto it. Mm -hmm. um, and this is what exactly what the student's going to see when they're in your course. And so you can submit something. So I'm just going to write a submission. So awesome. My mind is yeah. right now. <laughs> I always was like, I don't know what that is. I'm not going to click on it. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, you're scared you're going to break something. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is the student preview mode. And I'm enter I entered the assignment. Um, and I'm going to click Submit. It shows me here. This is what I entered. And I'm gonna, now I'm going to exit student preview mode. And you have to be very careful here, like Farnoosh said. When you exit, it gives you the option delete preview user. That would, if I kept that, that would delete the fake entry that I just entered. Um, but I'm going to click Keep, and then Continue. Now we're back to Instructor View. We know that because we have the Edit Mode option. We have our Course Management area here. And I'm going to go to Grade Center and Needs Grading. And there is my fake assignment that I just entered. So now you click the down arrow and Grade All Users. And now we, we're going to practice grading with the rubric. So again, this little tiny down arrow here is where it's hidden. It's not obvious. Click that down arrow, and we have two options. This is the list view. And you, if, when you're in the list view, you have to click Show Descriptions and Show Feedback if you want to see the entire rubric. Or you can click the table view. The only problem is the table view opens in a new window, and you've got to resize it, and it's kind of annoying. But it. I feel the table view is more like conducive to how you actually design the rubric, and it's more intuitive. Um, so again, Blackboard doesn't make things super user friendly, but you're still saving time, right? I mean, you're still not having to retype everything out over and over again, or copy and paste from a master document of commentary that you usually provide to students, something like that. So yeah, click the points that they earned, type in feedback if you want to. And in, you know, if we were doing this for real, these boxes wouldn't be blank. They would have the actual um, this in them, the feedback. Overall feedback. Save. It updates here in the attempt, right there. Save rubric and submit. And it would be the same for grading discussion boards. You can even attach rubrics to quiz questions. If you enter an essay question into your quiz, there is an option to attach a rubric to the essay. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. 
So um, that's it. Do you have any other questions on how to use it, or do you want me to go over anything else or redo something? Is there a way to work on it? Really helpful, so thank you. And save it and come back to it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're in the, you mean in Blackboard? Yeah, because that was in the, in the, we went to course tools in rubric, mm -hmm. and it just said submit it. But it's not actually attached to anything, so right. I can go back in and. Once you create it, it, it's just in the rubrics area. It's okay. not attached to anything yet. And we can actually edit them. Whether it's attached to a rubric or not, we can still edit it. So, like, I just attached the discussion board rubric to um, the discussion board. And then maybe I changed my mind about one of the things. I go here, and there's a down arrow next to the, it's called the contextual menu. There's a contextual menu for lots of things in Blackboard. Um, I would just click Edit. Um, and here I can just go mm -hmm. in and change anything if I decide that this is not actually what I wanted to use. And click Submit, and that would update anywhere where that rubric is attached. It's going to update it throughout the, throughout the course. Um, yeah, so this is, I can edit the rubrics in this rubrics tool, delete them, create new ones. Um, you can copy, like, I want to, let's say my, um, paper one is really similar to journal one, like they're going to have similar criteria, but just slightly different wording. I can copy it and then edit the second one and make it more specific for the journal instead. Instead of having to start from scratch every time, it is possible to copy. And um, Jan asked if this is being recorded. Yes, it's being recorded. And cross your fingers if the recording actually turns out. I'll um, send that out um, as soon as I have it. <laughs> I have handouts, too. Um, and I'll have to email it to the people who are online. But um, for those who are in the room, this is a recap of everything we talked about. <laughs> you're, my, you're my guinea pig at testing. <laughs> So on the front is um, everything that we talked about, just to, to sort of jog your memory later on if you're coming back to it, you're like, how did that happen, or what was I supposed to think about there? Um, and then on the back is a sample discussion board rubric, just for inspiration. And um, the Office of Education Innovation does have um, generic rubrics if you want to start from those, um, some that are pre-vetted, hopefully not as many of the um, common pitfalls in them. Just contact us, let us know. We'll um, give them to you. You can edit, you can customize, we can help you get into Blackboard. Um, because there is a way to transfer a rubric from one course to another. So maybe I should walk through that since we have a few minutes. This is a little bit more advanced, but we have time, so I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. So if you click export here, I, well, I, I make sure this checkbox is checked for the one I want to export. Export to local computer and submit. It's going to download a zip file onto my computer. And then I can go to a new course, mm -hmm. save file. And you have to make sure not to change the name. It, it um, creates this long, complicated name as our zip file. But if you change it, Blackboard can't import it into a new course. So it's kind of annoying. But just leave it alone. Don't open it. Don't let Your computer is going to want to automatically open it. Don't let it do that. Just leave it alone. And then you go to a new, um, new Blackboard course and go to the rubrics area under course management and then click import rubric. And then you'd find that zip file that you downloaded, which is probably here, right? Yep. And that's how you can transfer rubric from one, one course to another. And now I was actually in the same course, so it brought it in the same. Uh, now I have two of them. So I re-imported it. Great. Any other questions? Awesome. Well, thanks for coming. I'm glad you guys are here. And um, contact us if you have any questions or you want to consult with uh, an instructional designer. We're happy to help. And tell your friends. We have another one coming up on March. I think it's 24th. It's the day of the all-faculty staff meeting. Um, I haven't decided on what the topic will be yet, but hopefully it will be super interesting and super helpful and with just as many corny jokes in it as this one had. So thanks very much. Yeah.